Hello students, hope you are all doing well. During COVID-19 pandemic situation, stay home, wash your hands frequently, use face covers and gloves whenever it is urgent to go out and dedicate yourself to studies during this lockdown period. So with this note, let's start today's session. Students, you must be very familiar with the calculation of simple geometrical figures like rectangle, triangle, square, trapezium. But uh, what if you are assigned uh, with a task to calculate the area of a field? So by the end of today's session, you would know how to calculate the area of a field having irregular shape. So let's start. The subject computation of area. I am Soumya Sam, lecturer in civil engineering at SKDAP, Common Polytechnic, Rockham. So first of all, we must know what does computation of area mean. So it means the space of a tract of land projected upon the horizontal plane and not to the actual area of the land surface. And the calculated area or the computed area can be expressed in square meter or hectares or square feet or acre. And one hectare is equal to 10 to the power 4 meters square. Methods for computation of area. Generally, there are two methods for computation of area. And what are they? First one is graphical method, and second one is instrumental method. Graphical method uh, is further classified into determination of area of a field from the field nodes and determination of area of the field from the plotted plan. And the second one, which is the instrumental method. In this method, planimeter is used. Planimeter is a device to find out the area of an irregular field. So planimeter is used in instrumental method to find out the area of field. Here I have shared a slide showing planimeter. So the area of the field can be calculated uh, from uh, the two following ways. One is from field nodes and another one is from plotted plans. So let's see how we can calculate the area of the field from field nodes. So we can easily compute the area in two steps. In the very first step, the whole area uh, or the entire area in which the surveying work is conducted is divided into a number of small geometrical figures such as triangle, rectangle or square as per convenience. So once the whole area is divided into small geometrical figure, it is easy for us to calculate those small geometrical, uh, to calculate the area of those small geometrical figures and by adding up all those areas of small geometrical figures, we can get the required area. And by following this procedure, we can easily calculate the area of the field. We can calculate the area from plotted plans by considering the entire area and also by considering the boundary area. So let's first see how can we calculate the area of a field from plotted plan considering the entire area. So when we are considering the entire area, we can divide the entire area into uh, 
simple geometrical figures as per our uh, convenience. Let's say we divide it into small triangles. And the triangles are drawn in such a manner that they equalize the irregular boundary line. I repeat, the triangles are drawn in such a manner that they equalize the irregular boundary line. And once the triangles are drawn, once the triangles are drawn, then the base and altitude of the triangles are determined. And once the base and altitude of the triangles are determined uh, to the scale as per the plan is drawn, it is very easy for us to calculate the area of the triangle. So, Some of all these triangles, area of some of areas of all these triangles, we can get the required area. Look at this uh, figure, where the entire area is divided into small triangles, and the triangles are drawn such a way that it equalizes the irregular, it equalizes the irregular boundary lines. Here you can see it is the actual surface, but the base of the triangle is taken somewhere here so that the irregular boundary lines can be equalized. Once the entire area is divided into small triangles and from those triangles we can find out the altitudes and base of the triangle and then we can calculate the area of the triangle and by adding up uh, the areas of all the triangles we can get the required area. The next method uh, is dividing the area into squares. So, uh, in this method of squares, we have to follow uh, certain steps to find out the area. Okay, first of all, uh, a tracing paper is taken on which uh, squares are ruled out, and that tracing paper is then placed over a plan. Okay, and each square on that tracing paper represents the unit area, say one centimeter square or one meter square. And uh, the total area is calculated uh, by following certain steps. In the very first step, uh, we have to count the number of complete squares covered by that area. If you look at the figure which is uh, shown on the screen, here the uh, squares having uh, highlighted with here the squares which are highlighted with green color you can see are completely covered they, these are the complete squares which are covered by the area so first we have to count these numbers so these are these green areas these green squares are of alien numbers okay then in the next step we have to count the squares which are exactly covering half of the uh, square area uh, so here in this figure, the squares which are exactly covering half of the area are uh, 4 in number. See, exactly half of the area is covered. So these are 4 in number. Then in the next step, we have to count the squares. We have to count the squares which are covering more than half of the region of the square. Uh, and uh, in this figure, these are highlighted with uh, yellow color. Here see, these are covered. Uh, these are covering uh, more than half of the square region. So uh, the number is 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Total 7 number of square regions are there, which are uh, uh, covering more than half of the square area. And uh, we have to neglect or ignore the squares which are less than half. Uh, like you can see here, this region, this region, these are covering less than half of the square region. So we have to neglect those areas. So now how can we calculate these uh, areas? See, uh, complete squares are 18 in number. So 18, so 18 multiplied with one square centimeter equals to 18 square centimeter. Then in the second step, we, we have counted uh, the areas which are covering exactly half of the square region, of which we have counted as 4. So 4 multiplied with half square centimeter, which is equals to 2 square centimeter. In the third step, we have counted the areas which are covering more than half of the square region. And uh, we have uh, counted the number 
as uh, 7 multiplied with 1 square centimeter which is equal to 7 square centimeter. So the total area here is 18 plus 2 plus 7 equals to 27 square centimeter approximately. So in this manner, we can calculate the area of a field by dividing it into squares. Then in the next method, we shall see that how we can calculate the area of a field by drawing parallel lines and converting them into rectangles. Here, uh, here as you can see in the figure, a irregular shaped field is provided and uh, we need to calculate the area of the field by dividing into uh, some parallel lines and converting them into rectangles. So first of all, a set of parallel lines are drawn with uh, a constant distance between them on a tracing paper and then that tracing paper is then placed over that plan and uh, the tracing paper is placed over the plan in such a way that the area is enclosed between the parallel lines the area is enclosed between the parallel lines from the top uh, and at the bottom thus the area is divided into number of strips and uh, at the curved ends of the strip see here we are having a curved end at the curved end, we are going to replace it by a perpendicular line. Whenever there is a curved line is present, we are going to replace it with a perpendicular line. So now see, if we draw a perpendicular line here at this curved end and we draw a perpendicular line here at this curved end, from this side to this side, this represents a rectangle. And we can easily calculate the area of a rectangle by knowing this length. And we know the constant uh, distance between the parallel lines. So by multiplying this length with this uh, width, we can easily calculate the area of this rectangle. In the similar manner, we can calculate the area of rectangles present in the other strips. And by adding up all the areas of the rectangles, we can get the required area of the field. Okay. In the uh, Next method of calculation of area of field by uh, uh, using a plotted plan is considering the boundary area. So how can we calculate the area of a field by considering the boundary area? See, uh, see the figure here, which is, uh, which is displayed on the screen. It's easy for us to calculate this rectangular part, isn't it? But what about, sorry, but what about these remaining areas? What about these remaining areas? How are we supposed to calculate the remaining areas? So, in order to calculate the remaining areas, we have to draw some ordinates. We have to draw some ordinates at regular or constant interval from the side of the square or rectangle to the curved boundary, like the figure shown here. See, here different ordinates are drawn at regular interval from the side of this rectangle to the curved boundary. And uh, by dividing these uh, remaining parts in this fashion, we can calculate its area by following certain rules. And what are those rules? Those rules are meter ordinate rule, average ordinate rule, trapezoidal rule, and Simpson's rule. So one by one, we are going to discuss about all these four rules. So let's see first the mid ordinate rule. Look at this uh, figure. The ordinates are drawn from the side of the rectangle to the curved boundary and the ordinates are represented by capital O1, O2, O3, O4, O5, O6 and O7. 
and the regular interval or the constant interval between these ordinates are represented by small d and the total base length is represented by capital L and h1 small h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 represent the mid ordinate if we take sum of o1 and o2 and divide it with 2 we are going to get the mid ordinate which is h1 and in the similar fashion we can calculate h2 where h2 equals to o2 plus o3 divided by 2 so how can we calculate the required area we can calculate the required area by multiplying the common distance with the sum of all the mid ordinates So let's move to so let's move to the next rule, which is average ordinate rule. In the average ordinate rule, you can see uh, the area from the side of the rectangle to the curved boundary is divided into several ordinates, and the distance between these ordinates uh, is represented with uh, small d, and so the entire base length is represented by capital L. And uh, how can we calculate the uh, area by using average ordinate rule? We can calculate it by uh, taking the sum of all the ordinates and dividing it with the number of ordinates. And if we multiply it with the base length, we are going to get the desired area. Okay. In average ordinate rule, we are going to sum all the ordinates and divide the sum of all the ordinates with the number of ordinates. And then we will multiply it with the base length. And then we will get the area. Uh, of the field from the side of the rectangle to the curve boundary. The next rule is trapezoidal rule and uh, while applying the trapezoidal rule the boundaries between the ends of the ordinates are assumed to be straight. So the area enclosed between the baseline and the irregular boundary line are to be considered as trapezoid. Let's see the figure and uh, we will understand it, it in a better way. Here. So while applying the trapezoidal rule, the ends of the ordinates are assumed to be straight. So look at this figure. Here the ends of the ordinates are assumed to be straight and the area enclosed between the baseline and irregular boundary line the area enclosed here between the baseline and irregular boundary line are considered to be trapezoid so by computing the area of each trapezoid we can get the required area So we already know how to find out the area of trapezium, you know, half of the sum of the parallel lines multiplied with the height. So we, here we can uh, calculate the area of the trapezoid in that manner. The first area of the trapezoid is equal to sum of the two ordinates that is O1 plus O2 and dividing it with 2 and multiplying it with the regular interval between the ordinates. So first area equals to O1 plus O2 divided by 2 multiplied with T. In the similar manner the second area equals to O2 plus O3 O2 plus O3 divided by 2 multiplied with T. In the same manner, we can calculate the third, fourth and the last area of the trapezoid. And finally, we can get the required area by adding up each area of the trapezoid. The first area of the second area up to the last area. 
and uh, here you can see first area O1 plus O2 divided uh, by 2 multiplied with T. Second area O2 plus O3 divided by 2 multiplied with T. And uh, in similar manner, the last area which is O n minus 1 ordinate plus O n divided by 2 multiplied with D. So by taking common D by 2, we have O2 sorry O1 plus O2 plus O2 plus O3 plus O3 up to ON. So again we can uh, simplify it to D by 2 whole into O1 plus 2O2 plus 2O3 plus 2O4 plus 2O5 up to ON. So we can again uh, write it in a simplified manner as common distance divided by 2 whole into sum of first ordinate and last ordinate plus 2 whole into sum of other ordinates. So therefore we can conclude that we can get the required area by following trapezoidal rule by taking the sum of the first ordinate and last ordinate and twice of the sum of the intermediate ordinates and uh, this total sum is then multiplied with half of the common distance. So in this manner we can get the required area by following trapezoidal rule. Limitations. There is no limitation in a trapezoidal rule and this rule can be applied to any number of ordinates. Then let's move to next rule which is Simpson's rule. In Simpson's rule the boundaries between the ends of the ordinates are assumed to be uh, the form of an arc of parabola. In the previous rule, in trapezoidal rule, the ends of the ordinates were assumed to be straight. But here in Simpson's rule, the ends of the ordinates are assumed to be an arc of parabola. So that is exactly why Simpson's rule is also known as parabolic rule or uh, prismoidal rule. Let's see the figure. See, the ends, sorry, the ends of the ordinates here, look at the ends of the ordinates, these are assumed to be arc of parabola, okay. So, uh, here O1, O2, O3 are the ordinates. And uh, small d is the regular interval between these ordinates. In order to find out the area a f small e d c a, we have to follow certain steps. So let's see how we are going to find out the area. So in order to find the required area a f small e capital D C we need to find out the area of the trapezium AFDC and area of the segment FBDEF. So in order to find this area AF small e DCA we need to first calculate the area of the trapezium AFDC then we have to calculate this area F small e capital D capital E and capital F this area so the area of uh, the trapezium AFDC is uh, computed as O1 plus O3 divided by 2 multiplied with 2D 
here you can see the sum of two parallel lines O1 plus O3 divided by 2 and multiplied with uh, the height which is small d plus small d equals to 2d. So the required area of uh, the trapezium AFDC equals to O1 plus O3 divided by 2 into 2d. Then how can we get the area of the segment FVDEF equals to 2 by 3 multiplied with EE into 2D. Which is equals to 2 by 3 multiplied with O2 minus average of ordinate O1 plus O3 multiplied with 2d. So now we have to add up the two areas in order to get the required area. So by adding up the area of uh, trapezium AFDC and the segment FEDEF, we can get the required area which is equals to d by 3 whole into O1 plus 4O2 plus O3. In the similar manner we can get the next area and uh, so on. And we can get the total area, total required area by adding up all the areas A1, A2, A3 up to An. And if we simplify this, we are going to get that by following Simpson's rule, we can get the total required area by uh, multiplying the common distance with the first ordinate plus the last ordinate plus 4 into sum of even ordinates and 2 into sum of odd ordinates divided by 3. So therefore Simpson's rule states that sum of first ordinate and last ordinate plus 4 times the sum of remaining even ordinates and twice the sum of remaining odd ordinates are added and this total sum is then divided uh, uh, so sorry this total sum is then multiplied with one third of common distance and uh, in Simpson rule there is a limitation this rule can only be applied when the number of divisions are even and the ordinates are odd so whenever there are odd number of ordinates we can apply the Simpson's rule. If uh, even number of ordinates are present uh, and uh, we are uh, supposed to calculate it with uh, Simpson's rule then first uh, we have to calculate the area till the odd number of ordinate and the last segment which is the area between that odd number of ordinate and the last even uh, number of ordinate we have to calculate that area separately and then we have to add both of those areas in order to get the total required area. So there is a limitation here in the previous rule trapezoidal rule there was no limitation but here we are having a limitation whenever there is a odd number of ordinates we are going to use Simpson's rule. So, here I have shared a slide showing the difference between trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule. So, the first difference is in trapezoidal rule, the boundary between the ordinate is considered to be straight. Whereas in Simpson's rule, the boundaries between the ordinates is considered to be arc of parabola. And uh, 
in trapezoidal rule there is no limitation it can be applied to any number of corners but in simpson's rule there is limitation and uh, simpson's rule is applicable only when the number of ordinates are odd and uh, trapezoidal rule it gives approximate result whereas uh, simpson's rule gives uh, accurate result so whenever we need uh, to get accurate result we have to follow simpson's rule and you you know uh, you might be thinking that there are so many rules to calculate or to compute the area mid ordinate rule average uh, average uh, ordinate rule trapezoidal rule simpson's rule and uh, why do we need to calculate the area by following so many rules look if you need to get very if you need to calculate a very uh, roughly the area then you can follow the average rule then if you want to get a, a better result you can follow trapezoidal rule which gives approximate result but in order to get very accurate result uh, you you can follow simpson's rule to get the required area so let's discuss some of the probable questions that you may get uh, in the examination from this chapter uh, from the sort uh, from the sort question answers uh, uh, section that is for two marks you can get some questions like this like state simpson's rule state trapezoidal rule state the difference between trapezoidal rule and simpson's rule and uh, numericals numericals are very important from this chapter and uh, you are very likely to get some of the numericals uh, from computation of area by following certain rules so let's uh, have a, a look at this the uh, numerical so the the question says the following offsets were taken from a chain line to an irregular boundary line at an interval of 10 meter okay so the interval is given 10 meter so the chain is is uh, is 10 meter 10 meter chain is is given here uh, and the offsets are given as the offsets are nothing but the ordinates 0, comma 2.5 comma 3.5 comma 5.0 comma 4.6 comma 3.2 comma 0 meter so these are uh, the ordinates given let's count the number of ordinates 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so odd number of ordinates are given so we can directly apply the simpson's rule as we have already studied that simpson's rule has got its limitation that it can be only applied to odd number of ordinates so since uh, in this question odd number of ordinates are given so we can directly apply simpson's rule so next the question says compute the area between the chain line and uh, irregular boundary line uh and end of the opposite by following mid ordinate rule trapezoidal rule and